In this lecture, we're going to be looking at some more detailed calculus questions that use our new parametric derivative formula. So this question is very similar to ones that you saw already in Calc 1, but with a couple of additional steps. So remember, to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need the slope of the line and a point on the line. So we can get the slope easily enough using our new formula. Y dt is 1 sine of t plus t cosine of t. And dx dt is 1 cosine of t minus t sine of t. That's just using uh, the product rule. Now, there really, there really isn't anything we can do to simplify this. So we can go right to finding the slope of our line by substituting pi for t and simplifying the results. Now, the sine of pi, of course, is zero, so those terms just go away. And the cosine of pi is negative one, so this is minus pi times negative one over negative one, which is just negative pi. So that gives us half of what we need. Now, to find the coordinates of our point, uh, we can find the x and y coordinates using our two parametric equations. The x coordinate of our point is x of pi, which is pi cosine of pi, or just negative pi. And y of pi is pi sine of pi, which is 0. So now we have our slope from down here. The slope of our line is minus pi, and our point is uh, minus pi comma zero. Now to get um, our line, right, we'll use the point slope equation. That's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And let's see, let's put our numbers in here. Y is, uh, y1 is zero, m is negative pi, x1 is minus pi. So this gives us our, our final equation. Y equals negative pi x minus pi squared. We're going to follow the approach that you've seen before. Find the derivative, use it to calculate the slope of the tangent line, then use that value and the given point to get the line's equation. Now, uh, let's see, the y dt is 3t squared minus 1. T. So that makes this our derivative. And this is where things get a little different from what we're used to. We were given a regular xy point, but to find the derivative, we need a value of t, the parameter. And we can find those values by setting uh, x and y equal to 0. and solving those equations for t. Now, for the x-coordinate, we get t equals plus or minus 1. And from the y-coordinate, we get t equals 0 and plus or minus 1. Now, we only want the values that make both of the coordinates 0. So we're not going to use t equals zero, we're only going to use 
plus or minus 1 because x of 0 is negative 1, not 0. So uh, if we put substituting t equals 1 into our derivative, Uh, let's see, that's 2 over 2, which is 1. And right, here we'll do it again. This time I'm going to substitute. The y-axis. The y-intercept of our tangent lines are both going to be zero. So that makes our equations, our two tangent line equations, y equals x and y equals minus x. All right, so let's think about what just happened here. Uh, it's something that we would never see with a rectangular function, a single point that has two tangent lines. Now, if you look at the graph, It's easier to see what's going on. Uh, the graph goes through the origin twice. And the curve is going in a different direction each time. At t equals negative 1, the graph is in this increasing section. And we get the tangent line with the negative slope. Then at t equals 1, the graph is in this increasing section, and we get the positive slope. Now, the key thing that's driving this behavior is that these parametric equations we've been studying often aren't functions. And this is important for two reasons. First, there are a lot of natural phenomena that can't be modeled using functions because they do things like loop around, which violates our definition of a function. And second, it challenges your assumptions. You spend so much time working with functions in calculus and prior to that in algebra, that you build up an intuition for how they behave. When you see something like our parametric equations that aren't functions, it's important to be able to set that intuition aside and accept that the things you've come to expect might not apply here anymore. So this is uh, a little different. We're looking for specifically the horizontal and vertical tangents uh, to the curve given by these parametric equations. So we'll start the usual way. We'll find the derivative here. And this is equal to, let's see, dy dx plus dx minus dy. So the vertical asymptotes do this first. The vertical asymptotes occur where the denominator, that's 1 minus the cosine theta, is equal to 0. So if we solve this, we get theta equals uh, 2ki, where k is any integer. Okay, so what does this tell us now? The vertical asymptotes, they all are vertical lines. So we know the equation is going to look like x equals a constant. So all we need to do uh, to find that those values of x is to calculate Thank you. 
All right, so that's the first half of the question. Uh, now we need to find the vertical, uh, excuse me, the horizontal asymptote. And we're going to do that the, the same way, right? The horizontal asymptote occur where the numerator equals zero. So that's sine of theta equals zero, and this is true at k time, where k is any integer. All right, so we actually have we actually have a little a little bit of an issue here. Um, these numbers, these are zero pi, two pi, three pi, etc. But look at what happened down here. Right? When we're trying to find the vertical asymptotes, these values of theta are zero, two pi, four pi. Now you notice here there's, there's some overlap between the two. Um, and what's happening is, is that the values where both of these equal zero, the derivative is zero over zero, which is undefined. So the vertical asymptotes kind of win in this situation. And I'm going to cross off all of these values from my potential list of horizontal asymptotes that we already had covered by the vertical case. So this leaves us with uh, the, ver the horizontal asymptotes occurring where theta equals k pi, but this time k is an odd integer. Okay, so we can actually find the, asympto uh, the asymptotes the same way. I'm going to take k pi, and I'm going to calculate y of that amount. Well, this is 1 minus cosine k pi. And remember now, k is odd. Right? The cosine of k pi, when k is an odd integer, is minus 1. So we see here that we, in fact, only have one horizontal asymptote, and it occurs at y equals 2. All right, so what's happening here, right? This is, it seems like a pretty unusual situation. So if you look back at the first lecture in the series, you'll see that we discussed these equations already. These are the equations of a cycloid where r equals one. So the graph looks like this, and the horizontal asymptote is actually just, just skimming here along the top line of the graph. And which is why there's only one. They, it's always at that, that maximum. And the vertical asymptotes occur here at the cusps. Okay, so these are all of our kind of basic, uh, kind of standard calculus type questions. Uh, in the remaining lectures in, in this series on parametric equations, we're going to discuss two of kind of the bigger calculus things that we like to be able to do with curves. Uh, first, we're going to talk about finding the arc length, the, the length of a parametric graph, and then we're going to talk about finding area. And you, you'll see there, there's really kind of two situations when we talk about area. Sometimes we can talk about the area between the graph and the x-axis, much like we did in, in Calc 1 and 2. Uh, and we can also talk about because, uh, as we saw in the second example here, these graphs sometimes loop around and close up. Uh, we'll also look at ways that we can talk about the area enclosed by a parametric graph.